interview question is to make an object immutable. To be immutable, the internal state of the object must remain the same after it's created. If we think of the string class, string is immutable. So I create a string, and if I want to change the string, well, I can't because it's immutable. Instead, I'd have to use the old string in order to create a new string. Let's take a look at that string class and see what actually makes this immutable. I'm using command click to get into the string class. We're able to do this because we're using an IDE. IntelliJ is the IDE, and it allows us to see the source code of the string class. Inside of this class, we can see that the value array is what maintains the string data structure. When a string is created, data is put into the value array. If we look at the attribute again, it has the keyword final. This keyword forbids us from changing the reference that this variable holds. However, the string is not completely immutable just because this property has the final keyword. The final keyword doesn't protect us from changing the internal state of the object. It only protects us from changing the reference. So for this value array, I could change the item at index four or index 10, but we couldn't change the array referenced used for the value array once it's initialized. To kind of show you what I mean, here we have an integer array that is final. So even though it's final, we can still change what's at that index zero. So here we're changing that one to a zero. If we run this, we'll see that the output will actually show the internal state of my nums has been changed. Now it'll have 0, 2, 3 instead of 1, 2, 3. So we're not completely immutable. We see the real benefit of the final keyword if we tried to do something like this. So if we completely reset the reference, it's not gonna allow us to do that because of that final keyword. So it does some protection, but not enough. Back in the string class, using that final keyword is a good start, but what actually protects us from changing the internal state of value? Well, nothing. It could technically still be changed, but it can only be changed inside this class since the value array has that private access modifier. This means we can't access the value array outside the string class. And so we do have some options for some public methods here, but not for that value array. That's encapsulated inside of the string class. This means we interact with the value array using those public methods. So, so using toString, using concat, these all reference the value array, but on the outside, we don't have direct access to it. And this actually gives us some protection. Outside the string class, I cannot modify the value array. So let's look at those public methods. They all reference that value array, but none of them actually change the data in that value array. That's what makes the string class immutable. If we look at something like char at, value is passed here. If we click into one of these, we can see value is not changed. It's only used to retrieve the data after its creation. So if you want to create an object that's immutable, give it the final keyword and make its attributes private. Then have public methods that access the data, but don't change the data. That's how the internal state of the object will remain the same. Here, we have a small profile class that's immutable. To create a profile, you have to specify a username in the constructor. Once created, the username can never be changed. We have that final keyword, and we have no public methods that actually change the state of the username. Since the username is private, you can't access that attribute directly. Instead, you have to go through the get username public method. Since there is only a method to retrieve the attribute and there are no methods to change it, the profile class is immutable. If we added additional attributes, we would need to make sure they follow the same pattern of access modifiers in the final keyword so that we can keep this object immutable. So why make something immutable? Well, they're kind of nice to use. Since they don't change, they can easily be shared across multiple threads. The internal state never changes, so there's no need for these race conditions. Typically, it's a good practice to start with encapsulation, making those attributes private, making things immutable at first. Then when you need to make them mutable, when they do need to change, you can add that functionality and refractor the code to make it mutable. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video and learned something new, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Happy coding.